Walker describes how Republicans are ratcheting up the pressure on the Wisconsin 14. Each day we're going to ratchet up a little bit. The Senate Majority Leader had a great plan. He, he told them out this morning. Uh, he told the Senate Democrats about, and he's going to announce it later today, and that is the Senate Organization Committee is going to meet um, and pass a rule that says if you don't show up uh, for two consecutive days on a session day in the state Senate, the um, the uh, Senate chief clerk, it's a little procedural thing here, but can actually have your payroll stop from being automatically deducted into Beautiful. your checking account. And instead, you still get a check, but the check has to be personally picked up, and he's instructing them, uh, which we just loved, to lock them in their desk on the floor of the state senate. All right, there's a lot more to come. That soundbite proves Walker isn't interested in the Democratic product process. He just wants to play political games with the Democrats' paychecks. Walker goes on to explain how he contacted one of the Wisconsin 14 senators over the weekend. Now, you're not talking to any of these Democrat bastards, are you? Uh, I, there's one guy that's actually voted with me in a bunch of things I called on Saturday for about 45 minutes, uh, mainly to tell him that while I appreciate his friendship and he worked with us and other things, tell him why I wasn't going to budge. Mainly because uh, he's, he's about the only reasonable one over there. And I figured if I talked to him, he'd go back to the rest of the gang and say, you know, I've known Walker for 20 years. He's not budging. Now, what's his name again? Uh, his name is Tim Cullen. All he, right. I'll have he, to give that man a call. Well, actually, in, in his case, I wouldn't call him, and I'll tell you why. He's pretty reasonable, but he's not, a, he's not one of us. Not one of us. I wonder if Walker means billionaires or Republicans. Later in the call, Walker lays out a plot to trap the Wisconsin 14 so Republicans can stage a sneak attack vote. An interesting idea that was brought up to me this morning by my chief of staff, if we won't do it till tomorrow, is putting out an appeal to the, uh, the Democrat leader that I would be willing to sit down and talk to him, the Assembly Democrat leader, plus the other two Republican leaders, talk, not negotiate, and listen to what they have to say if they will in turn, uh, but I'll only do it if all 14 of them come back and sit down in the state assembly. They can uh, they can recess it to come back over and talk to me, but they'll have to go back there. The reason for that is we're verifying it this afternoon, but legally we believe once they've gone into session, they don't physically have to be there. If they're actually in session for that day and they take a recess, the, the, uh, the 19 Senate Republicans could then go into action and they'd have a quorum because they started out that way. Um, so we're double checking that, but that would be the only, if you heard me that I was going to talk to them, that would be the only reason why is we would only do it if they came back to the Capitol with all 14 of them. So my sense is, hell, I'll, I'll talk if they want to yell at me for an hour. You know, I, I'm used to that. I, I can deal with that, but I'm not negotiating. Bring a, bring a baseball bat. <laughs> That's what I do. I have one in my office. You'll be happy with that. Walker's trying to act like a tough guy to impress the boss. That bite gives the Wisconsin 14, I think, all the cover in the world. It proves Walker isn't being an honest broker, and Walker really shows how morally corrupt he is when he talks about the protesters. What we were thinking about the crowds was, uh, was planting some troublemakers. You know, the, well, the, the only problem with, because the, the, we thought about that, the problem with, uh, or my only uh, gut reaction to that would be, uh, right now, the the uh, and the lawmakers I've talked to have just completely had it with them. The public is not really fond of this. Uh, the teachers union did some polling and focus groups, I think, and found out that the public turned on them the minute they closed school down for a couple of days. The guys we got left are largely from out of state, and I keep dismissing it in all my press comments, saying. Yeah, they're mostly from out of state. My only fear would be is if there was a ruckus cause, is that that would scare the public into thinking maybe the governor's got to settle to avoid all these problems. You know, whereas I'm saying, hey, you know, we can handle this. People can protest. This is Madison, you know, full of the 60s liberals. Let them protest. You know, this is shocking. The governor of Wisconsin just admitted 
he considered putting troublemakers in the crowd to cause a ruckus. He thought about it. He considered it. What's that say about his character? The only thing that stopped Walker from having his people whip up trouble was a political calculation that violence may hurt him in the arena of public opinion, and he wasn't ready to do that. He wasn't concerned about hurting the 60s liberals in Madison. Late in the call, the man, posing as David Koch, tried to get Walker off the phone. But the governor had one more story to tell. Walker went into this, I guess you could say, Glenn Beck-like explanation of his hero, Ronald Reagan. It's good catching up with you. Yeah, well, thanks. This is an exciting time. This is, you know, I, I told my cabinet I had a dinner the uh, Sunday, or excuse me, Monday right after the 6th. Came home from the Super Bowl where the Packers won. And that Monday night, I had all my cabinet over to the residence for dinner. Talked about what we were going to do, how we were going to do it. We had already kind of built plans up, but it was kind of the last hurrah before we dropped the bomb. And I stood up and I, I pulled out a, a, a picture of Ronald Reagan. And I said, you know, this may seem a little melodramatic, but 30 years ago, Ronald Reagan, whose 100th birthday we just celebrated the day before, um, had one of the most defining moments of his, of his political career, not just his presidency, when he fired the air traffic controllers. And uh, I said, to me, that moment was more important than just for labor relations or even the federal budget. That was the first crack in the Berlin Wall in the fall of communism, because from that point forward, the Soviets and the communists knew that Ronald Reagan wasn't a pushover. Walker actually thinks the Berlin Wall came down in 1989 because Ronald Reagan fired 11,000 Union air traffic controllers back in 1981. This proves he's delusional, and it also proves that this was never, never anything about a budget crisis. It's crystal clear. It was never about money. This was all about destroying unions and going after wage earners. Governor Walker addressed the prank phone call during a press conference this afternoon. The bottom line is the things I've said are things I've said publicly all along. Uh, the fact of the matter is uh, people have brought up all sorts of different options. And as you saw, if you've listened to the tape, we, we put that down. We said we've had a civil discourse. Uh, my greatest fear over the weekend was that somehow when we had the abundance of people on either side of the issue, both for and against the bill, that that might somehow lead to a disturbance. For us, that doesn't benefit the debate. We Walker, he's dancing big time. The prank call makes him look like a fraud, a liar, and a guy with major presidential aspirations. It also validates the thousands of protesters and the 14 Senate Democrats who were standing up to his radical agenda. Get your cell phones out, folks. I want to know what you think on this one tonight. Tonight's text question is, do the Walker tapes prove that Governor Walker is beholden to the Koch brothers and big business? Text A for yes, text B for no to 622-639. We'll bring you the results later on in the show. Joining us now from an undisclosed location is Wisconsin State Senator Lena Taylor. Senator, uh, you're one of the 14. Does this story uh, strengthen your resolve tonight? Is this the smoking gun? What do you think? It definitely strengthens my resolve in the fact that it just shows that he has no character, his integrity is in question, he's not been honest with the Wisconsinites, and it really shows what we've been saying the whole time. This has not been about the budget. It's a fabricated budget crisis, and the only thing he wants to do is bust unions. He's, you know, really the puppet of uh, the Koch brothers. Does this keep the 14, say, tighter than ever and out of the state even longer? At this juncture, we have not decided to go back, <laughs> and surely keeping our checks is not the threat that's going to make us go back. I mean, that's ridiculous. Senator Taylor, how do you think Wisconsin residents are going to respond to this tape and this whole thing where the governor thought he was talking to one of the Koch brothers? I mean, isn't he going to have a severe credibility problem with all residents of Wisconsin, even the ones that support him? And, and how could the ones that even support him come out and say, Oh, this is no big deal. What do you make of all of that? What about the Wisconsin, the Wisconsin residents? You know, the Wisconsin way is about integrity. And so I'm convinced that individuals will have a problem. He already had his numbers going down by about 10 points or so. And more importantly, the Wisconsin residents are with uh, the Wisconsin 14. The polls show 60 to 70-something percent of individuals agree that um, 
workers should be able to have their rights. So now knowing that basically we're not open for business, but we're for sale uh, under uh, Governor Walker, I believe that the numbers will go up, his numbers will go down, and people will continue to uh, go to the Capitol and make a stand against him. What about Senator Cullen? Uh, he claims that he spoke to Senator Cullen. First of all, does the group of 14 know that Cullen spoke to the governor? And secondly, is he a weak link? Uh, no, he's not a weak link. Yes, we did know that he spoke to him. Senator Cullen told him. We all reached out to Republicans, and the majority, uh, the minority leader has also spoken with the governor, and we've reached out to the majority leader. So this is not unusual. We, we decided that we wanted individuals to reach out and see if they could make any leeway with whatever Republican relationships that they had, because we need someone to have courage and show leadership. So when uh, Senator Cullen shared with us the conversation he had with the governor, uh, clearly uh, the governor has um, uh, pegged Senator Cullen wrong. Uh, he has not wavered, he's never wavered, and he's with us, and we're united, and uh, we're, we're not turning back at this juncture. Uh, has the governor ever spent 20 minutes talking to you? You know, I've been trying to talk to the governor since before he got elected and since he's been elected. He just <laughs> won't have a meeting with me. Well, I don't know what it is. He never liked doing those dual meetings with me. And share with our viewers tonight, if you can, Senator, you can tell us now, weren't the 14 of you watching TV and when this story came out and said, can you believe this? This is a, there's an element, I know this is a very serious issue because this has affected people's lives. But this has got a real comical element to it, doesn't it? I mean, the guy didn't even know who the hell he was talking to. You know, <laughs> I've had to ask a couple times, is this real? <laughs> Did he really do this? And it was really, to be honest, I think we were more shame, more shame as Wisconsinites that our governor um, lacks the integrity. I mean, I, I really wonder where was he when his dad was preaching? Good question. Senator, great to have you with us tonight. I appreciate your time. Thanks Thank so you. much. Senator Lena Taylor with us here on The Ed Show. Remember to answer tonight's text question there at the bottom of the screen. I want to know what you think. When the boss calls, you better answer. A possible ethics violation by Walker during the prank call.